Hello and welcome to the World History Project. World History Project is an ambitious and masochistic project of mine where I attempt to tell the history of our world on an unprecedented scale. Every country, every province, and every city has its own story to be told, and it's my goal to tell these stories to the world. I make my selection of countries and provinces through random selection. Each episode will cover the history of my selected area and hopefully bring you, the viewer, a deeper understanding of a place you might have only heard about. Now with that being said, let's get started. The first province we will discuss in this ridiculous project of mine is the Oblast of Odessa in Ukraine. Odessa is located in the southwestern corner of Ukraine. In terms of area, it is the largest Ukrainian oblast with over 33,300 square kilometers of land, and it's most often characterized by its large flat steppes that are divided by the estuary of the Dniester River. It is renowned for its soil fertility and intensive agriculture, which has become the mainstay of its local economy. The earliest traces of human habitation in Odessa can be found in burial grounds of multiple Neolithic culture groups such as the Gubinyelta, the Kukuteni Tripilians, and the Ustatovos. In the first millennium BCE, Milesian Greeks built colonies along the Black Sea coast. The towns were Albea, Taris, Niconium, Pentisimaeum, and Chersonius. Evidence of these towns can be seen today through the artifacts left behind by the Greeks, such as ceramic, sculptures, inscriptions, and even entire decorated sea vessels, so it should come as no real surprise that these were very wealthy colonies. The cities within Odessa have changed hands many, many times throughout the area's early history, and unfortunately an attempt to catalog all the changes for all the cities would bring me well past my YouTube mandated time limit. But for the sake of time, I can name the country that have at least played an important role in Odessa's tumultuous past. There were the Pechniks and the Cumans, who first tra then transferred power to the Golden Horde, who abdicated a number of cities to the Crimean Conte and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Even the Ottoman Empire played a significant role in the region's history. Throughout the first millennia CE, a number of different cultures held control over the area, including the Khazars, the Polovatskis, and the Pechniks. But by the 9th century, the Slavs had begun to increase in power and in dramatic number, eventually becoming the dominant culture within their legion, and in doing so had united themselves into a state, with Kiev as their cultural center. As we step closer into modern history, the area became controlled by the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans rebuilt a mighty fortress at Kaji Bey, but other than the ethnic strains that were placed on the population by its Turkish leaders, there weren't very many events of note, at least until the Turkish War of 1787, when the Russian forces stormed Kaji Bey and Yeni Donya for the Russian. Russia formally gained possession of the area as a result of the Treaty of Jassy in 1792, and it became a part of Novorossiya, or New Russia. It was directly after this that Catherine the Great, the Empress of Russia, ordered the founding of a city named Odessa. It was centered on the site of an old Turkish fortress and became a crucial trading port for the Russian Empire. In less than 100 years, Odessa grew from one small fortress to the biggest metropolis in all of New Russia. From 1795 to 1814, the population of Odessa increased 15 times over and reached nearly 20,000 people, which for the time was a very large amount. And with the new boom in the economy came an increased diversity of the population. There were now Albanians, Armenians, Azaris, Bulgarians, Crimean Tartars, Frenchmen, Germans, Greeks, Italians, Jews, Poles, Romanians, Russians, Turks, and Ukrainians. The cosmopolitan nature of the city was once documented by a famous poet in Russia named Alexander Pushkin, whom you might have heard of. He lived in the city for a year, and in a letter he wrote that the air is filled with all Europe. French is spoken, and there are European papers and magazines to read. During the Crimean War of 1853 to 1856, however, the area became targeted by British and French naval bombardment. The region's growth was only temporarily put on hold, though, because soon after the war there was a railroad placed in the province that linked Kiev with Kharkiv and Lassi in Romania, which caused another influx in the population. But this time, it were the farmers who benefited, and by 1866, the region was the largest exporter of grain in the entirety of the Russian Empire. In 1905, Russia had found itself in the midst of a very bloody civil war, and of course, with Odessa being one of the leading economic powerhouses within the country, it, of course, is going to find itself involved. 
1905, there was a workers' uprising thanks to the support of the crew from the Russian battleship Potemkin and Lenin's Iskra. In fact, one of the world's most famous and influential propaganda films of all time, the battleship Potemkin, commemorated the uprising and included a scene where hundreds of Odeskan citizens were murdered on the Great Stone Staircase by Tsarist forces. The staircase is, of course, now known as the Potemkin Steps. The actual massacre, however, occurred on the streets nearby, not on the steps themselves. But the film caused many to visit Odeska to see the site of the slaughter, and the steps continue to be a major tourist attraction in Odeska today. After World War I and the February Revolution, the area became part of the Ukrainian People's Republic, but it was soon lost to the Russian Volunteer Army, then the Red Army. By 1920, the territory of Odeska Oblast was secured by the Soviet authorities and became part of the Ukrainian SSR. The Oblast was created in 1932 from five districts. Unfortunately, soon thereafter, World War II had broken out. Uh, before being occupied by Romanian troops in 1941, a large fraction of the region's population, industry, infrastructure, and all cultural valuables that could be collected were evacuated to the inner regions of the USSR, and after retreating, the Red Army units destroyed as much as they could of the Odeska Harbor facilities that would be left behind. Following the first siege of Odeska and its Axis occupation that followed, approximately 25,000 Odeskas were murdered on the outskirts of the city, and over 35,000 were deported. This tumultuous time was known as the Odeskan Massacre, and most of the atrocities were committed within the first six months of the occupation, where 80% of the Jewish population within the region were killed. However, after the Axis forces began to lose ground on the Eastern Front, the Romanian administration changed its policy, refusing to deport the remaining population to the extermination camps in Poland, as requested per Germany, and they allowed the hiring of ethnic minorities as laborers instead. A direct result of this was that, despite the atrocities that occurred in 1941, Odeska had one of the highest survival rates out of any area on the Eastern Front during World War II. When the region was reoccupied in 1944, the city of Odeska was one of the first four Soviet cities to be awarded with the title of Hero City by the Soviet government. Some of the Odeskans had a more favorable view of the Romanian occupation, however, which contrasted sharply with the official Soviet view in that period that saw it as exclusively a time of hardship, deprivation, oppression, and suffering. This view persisted throughout the entire history of the USSR and is still seen today in modern media. Due to the opposing view, many Soviet policies were aimed at imprisoning and executing numerous Odeskans, along with deporting most of the German and Tartar population on accounts of collaboration with their occupiers. In the 1960s and 70s, the region had returned to its old habit of tremendous growth, despite a large exodus of immigration to the United States and other Western nations. Domestic migration became a small problem, too, as the Odeskan middle and upper classes moved to cities like Moscow and Leningrad, which offered Soviet citizens with tremendous opportunities for career advancement. But the void left by those who left were filled quickly by new immigrants from rural Ukraine, and industrial professionals were invited from all over the Soviet Union to come live and work in Odeska. Today, Odeska remains a crucial region for Ukraine. It provides a significant level of oil refining and chemical processing. It holds important sea and river ports, as well as oil pipelines and railways. And of course, it provides the country with a nearly endless supply of agricultural goods, ranging from wheat to maize to barley to sunflowers and sugar beets. As of now, it has a population of 2.4 million and continues to be as culturally diverse as it's ever been.